All right, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we can go ahead and get started um, for everybody that just joined. Um, here we've got Dream owner and chairman, Larry Gottesteiner, Dream co-owner and vice president, Renee Montgomery, and of course our uh, incoming president, COO, Morgan Shaw Parker. Um, we'll hear from all three of you before we open it up to questions. Um, so first I'll send it over to Larry to start us off and then introduce our new COO. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, uh, it was the day after the insurrection earlier this year that we called Commissioner Engelbert and offered ourselves up as stewards of the important Atlanta Dream franchise. Uh, our goals were to promote women's sports, promote women, uh, support, um, uh, support social justice, and, um, and, and, and preserve the legacy of Dream 2020. And uh, about three months later, uh, we closed on the acquisition. Uh, uh, it's, there's been a lot of highs and lows in the last year, but most notably the high was that we were named uh, ESPN's Humanitarian Team of the Year for the work that we did, for the work that the Atlanta Dream did in 2020 in changing history. And, um, and we're very proud of that. And as we began to fill out our team, uh, we decided the first step for us was to establish our core values. And that were, those were transparency, integrity, respect, communication, passion, a community. And um, today is an important day and step in that journey. Today, I am very pleased, proud, and honored to welcome Morgan Shaw Parker as our new president and chief operating officer. She is a, a former NFL executive. She's got 25 years of deep professional sports experience with the Kansas City Chiefs, with Nike. And we think this is a really important day for, of course, for the Atlanta dream, but for women's sports generally to track this caliber of professional into our league. Um, we think that um, you are going to be uh, love working with her, love her infectious energy. Uh, and um, right now, I'd like you all to welcome our new president and chief operating officer, Morgan Shaw Parker. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Thank you, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I am just absolutely thrilled to be joining the Atlanta Dream organization. Um, and again, thank you, Larry, Suzanne, Renee, for your vision um, and, and what you've set forth. Uh, I'm proud to be a steward of this brand. It's very rare in sports to find an organization with values-driven leadership. And my family and I moved here five and a half, almost six years ago to work for Arthur Blank. And as you know, everyone in Atlanta knows, you know, he's really built an organization and sports franchise that is based on core values. And what was really um, something that stood out in the process when I was speaking with Suzanne, Larry and Renee is that they have built the exact same thing. Larry and Suzanne have built that together with the leadership team at Northland. And it's really about putting people first. And I couldn't be more excited to bring that same philosophy to life, a philosophy that I've lived by for my 25 years, to put that same philosophy to life for the Atlanta dream. Um, I, I, like Larry said, I bring 25 years of experience across all levels of the sports industry. And uh, I also come from a family of female athletes, although I've worked quite a bit on the men's side. I've also worked quite a bit on the women's side of sports while I was at Nike with the NBA, the WNBA, um, the Olympics, you name it. Um, and, and my goal here is really to build a world-class organization, not just a, a first-class organization for women's sports, but a world-class organization that really is deserving of you know Atlanta to be able to pay attention and and want to come to these games not only to support these incredible athletes who have already built an amazing community and a culture in and amongst themselves but really you know to build an organization that reflects the values of Atlanta and reflects the values that Larry and Suzanne and Renee have set forth um, 
my goal is really to build that authentic connect connection with Atlanta in the community and make sure that this team is more visible, um, that there's more access for the fans um, to, to be able to take part in these games, to be able to see the players more visibly as well. And I know it's going to take a long time, um, but Larry and Suzanne and Renee are very committed to that and, and to this and building this franchise for the long run. Um, the name Atlanta Dream, it, it really speaks for itself, but I don't know that many folks in Atlanta really know that it was, it was named after Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous speech. And we really want to build an organization that is worthy of that. Um, the connection in Atlanta is so important, and I believe there is only upside. So I feel like my 25 years have really prepped me for this moment and to be able to make an impact in women's sports the way women's sports should be built, not in the same model that men's sports are built, but the way that a women's franchise should be run and a women's franchise um, should operate, which is really starting with the associates, the staff, and the players. So thank you very much, Renee, Suzanne, and Larry. I, I couldn't be more excited. Um, yeah, I'll hop in right after. I'm just gonna speak to the practicality of it all. As you guys can see, I'm really excited because I think things that when I, you know, I tweeted this. So if you follow me on Twitter, I tweeted my excitement, but I want people to understand that this is a big hire. This is a big deal in a sense of having high powered executives. Usually women's sports, unfortunately is the stop point where you're trying to get to somewhere else you know women's sports the WNBA it's where people go along their path to get to their dream job and so changing that narrative the WNBA is a dream job you know this is a dream organization and so to have somebody that's a high-powered executive like Morgan to already be experienced in the space to already have the wherewithal the know-all to do big business because when we talk about the WNBA when we talk about these teams we always talk about finances. It's money driven. A lot of the decisions It's the funds just aren't there. We need to start doing business, you know, not just the Atlanta dream, the WNBA, all the teams, we need to start doing big business. And I think when you start to have people like Morgan in the fold as an executive, you know, I told Suzanne, I've been talking Suzanne a bears ear off because I told her that Morgan is a game changer. And Suzanne is the one that from the get, has been on Morgan, has been like this, check her resume. Just from the start to finish, Suzanne saw, you know, and, and then she showed us all. And, and I was not disappointed to say the least, you know, like as soon as I saw everything that Morgan has done and my vision of what she could do, I was, it was almost to where we were recruiting Morgan. It was like, we got to get Morgan in the fold because <laughs> that changes things. That changes the organization instantly to be able to do business at a high level. So I know a lot of people are looking at the Atlanta dream. What are we doing? Where are we going? We're building, you know, that's what we're doing. We're building and we're building it the right way. So it might not be at anyone's pace. It might not be what everyone wants us to do at whatever time we want to do, but we're putting quality pieces in place to build a franchise, to build a foundation. And so I'm excited. Like, I think that this is what the players deserve. I think that this is what the WNBA deserves high powered people that can do great business that also we talk about it, have a certain standard when it comes to how you carry yourself, values, morals. For me, I feel like I'm surrounded by those people and we're just continuing to do it. So of course I'm hype. You guys know, I always show when I'm excited and I'm excited. And so I wanna make sure that everyone understands this is a big deal. You know, like I wouldn't, I'm very transparent. I wouldn't say if it is, but the get, Morgan here with the Atlanta Dream is a big deal and we welcome her for sure. Shouts to Suzanne, that's my homie and she did that, so we did it, baby. So yes, like it's, it's really exciting. Um, and just last thing I'll say is that just to be alongside Suzanne, Larry, and now Morgan that have like-minded people, you know, and it's, it's the like-minded values. I think that's something that Atlanta should get behind. The WNBA should get behind. All the other stuff is going to fall into place. We want to win, people. Of course, I hope people know that. So I'm going to say the obvious caption. We want to win, and we're building the franchise, and we're going to build the team to do that. So that's all I got. That's my piece. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Morgan, I hope you're ready for that energy all the time. <laughs> Let's, always go. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. 
<laughs> all right. Thank you, all of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Uh, please use the raise hand function. I'll call on you one by one. Um, and please let us know exactly who your question is directed to. Um, our first question is going to come from Eric Jackson from the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Morgan. Uh, congratulations, first of all. I know that's really big. Um, my first question, I just want to ask you, what's your highest priority in the first few months of this new role? My highest priority is listening. It, it first starts with understanding the organization, really taking inventory of who's there, how are they run, understanding the organization from the ground up. Um, I've, I've really been in contact mostly with Larry, Renee, and Suzanne and the leadership group. And so, you know, my first order of business is to really listen to the associates. Um, very quickly after that is really taking inventory of our fan base and understanding our season ticket members and making sure that we're connecting with them in the right way and that we're communicating with them in the right way. And so those are, those are my first two priorities. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, next question comes from Howard Megdal with the next. Go ahead, Howard. Howard. Oh, hey, great to, great to see you always, Larry. Good to chat with you as well. And Morgan, uh, congratulations and welcome. Uh, Thank you. I have a two part uh, question, if I could, for you. Um, first side of it is, and you mentioned this in, in your opening statement, about the building a women's sports franchise isn't an echo of a men's sports franchise, and it, it differs in that way. I wonder if you could take me through uh, some concrete ways that you see a different path opening up to be able to do that, especially here in 2021, when we've seen so much growth in the women's sports sector. Absolutely. Well, first of all, from a, from a fundamental perspective, the men's game and the women's game are similar, but they're different. And that's okay. We don't have to build a women's sports team in the same way that the men's sports franchises have been built. And that could be a number of different ways. Um, I, I don't want to go into too many of those yet right now, because I, I really want to make sure that I have time on the ground with the staff, with the organization, with the league to really understand that trajectory and where they want to go. And also, most importantly, is taking inventory of this Atlanta market and, and really doing the research and understanding you know, Atlanta over indexes in women. Um, any given year when the census comes out, it's between 51 and 53% female. Atlanta's never had a women's sports team that they can truly rally around. The athletes on the court have done an incredible job already for the past nine years, but there hasn't been a steward for that team to really make sure that Atlanta could connect in the right way. And, you know, I don't come down from the mountaintops with a template on, on how to do it because it really hasn't been done before. And most importantly, it hasn't been done in this market. And this market is one of the most diverse, innovative, thoughtful, um, humanitarian markets within the U S and, in order to build the franchise in the way that Atlanta needs it to be built as well, it's going to take some time. So I know I'm not answering your question directly, but I could not be more excited for the challenge and the opportunity that exists right here in this city. Well, you, you largely did. I, I, I mean, obviously that takes time, but that it speaks to largely the second part of my question, which is Atlanta historically under previous ownership was near the bottom in attendance and was also near the bottom in terms of a lot of uh, the investment that went into it. And I guess I wonder how much you feel like Atlanta specifically offers you an opportunity in this league to be, let's say, top half of the uh, of the league in attendance for among other metrics. It, it's a great question. And you're absolutely right. Um, bring on the underdogs is what I say. <laughs> the, the opportunity is huge in terms of what this market will bear, but it takes time. Within the Atlanta community, you really have to build the trust. You have to give fans, and this is not just the Atlanta market, this is sports in general, men's sports and women's sports. You've actually got to understand your consumer. We've got to take the time and understand 
where our fans are spending their time. How can we serve them? And how can we serve this community in a way that they want to be reflected? So they're going to want to love us. They're, you know, it's just the same marketing and, and business continuum that, that, you know, serves everyone. It's like us, love us, then give them a reason to want to spend time with us. And then maybe they'll want to spend a buck with us come to games, experience all that this game and this women's sport has to offer. And, and I'm, I, like I said, I couldn't be more excited to help shine a spotlight on these incredible athletes and all that they've already done and what this organization and the associates and the staff members have already done to, to build that here. Thank you. And shout out to Renee's WNBA weekly. <laughs> That's the title nine newsletter. <laughs> All right, thanks, Howard. Uh, our next question comes from Erica Ayala from Locked On Women's Basketball. Go ahead, Erica. Thank you so much. Uh, the nine is uh, well represented, but my question here will be for Morgan. Um, first of all, congratulations and welcome to the W. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts about where we're at in um, in sports marketing and media, and and how incorporating the, the the athletes we're seeing name image likeness obviously on the ncaa side we're seeing athletes be able to take ownership of their marketing and their brand how does that play into what you're be expected to do with the atlanta dream you know it, it's a great question and there's so much opportunity to leverage our athletes' voices in a different way. You know, back in the day, it was just about the team, the team, the team. And it is about building a strong team. But the team is made up of individual voices all working together for a common goal. That's what, that's what they do on the court. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what we should strive to do as a business as well. You know, when it comes to, you know, name image likeness, when it comes to things like gaming, when it comes to things like content and how are fans looking at content, um, it, it's not just advertising anymore. You really have to understand and, and tell authentic stories and pull back the curtain um, to, to really showcase these amazing, strong women and what they have to do every day to compete at the highest level. And those stories aren't being told in the right way, I don't believe yet. The spotlight isn't being shined in the brightest way possible. These women need to be on the major networks, not just on a side network that solely caters to women's sports. So it, it, it's going to take a, a while. Um, there's a lot to understand in terms of the way the industry is changing. I think COVID has actually changed things a lot. I've been saying for the last 18 months to two years that I feel like COVID has really fast forwarded us as an industry, not just marketing and advertising, but it has fast forwarded us almost five to 10 years when it comes to marketing and brand and authenticity and the, the need to co connect at an authentic level with our fans. Otherwise, we're not going to be relevant. And, and I think that these athletes um, need to be served in the right way. And we need to give them the opportunity to shine in the best way possible. All right, our next question is Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Uh, hello, everyone. This question is for Renee and Morgan. And again, congrats, Morgan. Um, Renee, I remember a few weeks back on Take Line, you said that you were interested in seeing players with their own podcasts and media platforms. Um, how much of the future of branding for the dream is going to come from that? And then Morgan, what sort of background do you have in empowering that and communicating that on the women's side and on the player side? What up, Spencer? Yeah, no, I, you know, the, I was talking about it and a lot of people they look at the player branding side, name it and engine likeness, and they start to get worried because players have a power in a sense of they can speak out against an organization. And we've seen players start to do that now where they voice their opinions on the internet. For me, I think it's great. I think that players need podcasts, players need places to have a platform for things to say. And hopefully if you're an organization that are running things a certain way, we there's nothing to hide. You know, like if you're doing we know the sports business, it's a business. So there's not going to always be happy-go-lucky. I know that it's going to get to a point where we have to trade away players that I may be close to. We may have to cut players. That's part of the business. But you can still do good business and it be part of the business. And so 
I think that, you know, players should have that power. It shouldn't be a one way street in as far as how stories are told. You know, there's a player should have a place to voice their opinions. I opted out on Twitter, you know, on my own platform. So now that I'm an owner and exec, I don't want to say, okay, keep the athletes quiet. No, let's, let's give plat athletes a platform because imagine now if one of the players on a team has a, a booming podcast that has a fan base that follows them everywhere. That only helps the Atlanta dream. That doesn't hurt us. That helps us. So players building up their player profiles, their name, image, and likeness, that only helps the team. I 100% agree. And I think that this is a time where there's a lot of change happening in this space. And if we don't embrace it as a team, if, if all teams and leagues don't embrace it and really figure out how to coexist, I don't believe there's any any competition here. It's just figuring out how to work together differently. And it starts with authenticity. It starts with transparency. It starts with being able to pull back the curtain, like I said, and, and really showcase the athletes, their stories, their why, and, and figure out how to make sure that the core values at the very heart of our organization match the core values and the heart of these players. It's what they put in to their practice and, and their play every single day. Um, you know, I've always believed that, you know, sport is also a, a catalyst for social change. And you see what these athletes have done in 2020 and watching that transpire here in Atlanta was just a huge reminder to me that these voices, these individual and collective voices matter. It's not just about a president or an owner. It is on a president and ownership to create a value system and an organization that really reflects those values. But, you know, I, I really look forward to figuring out how this is all going to work moving forward. And, and, building a world-class organization for the Atlanta dream in that phase. All right, our next question comes from Emmanuel Glaze from the Crush Sports Talk. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Again, congratulations, Morgan, like everybody else. Let me, this question is for Larry. And Larry, let me ask you this. With so much going on this year, from uh, purchases of this team after the insurrection to the coaches' changes and things of that nature, how important was it to make this hire at this time uh, for the Atlanta dream and hiring someone like Morgan? whose reputation is, uh, precedes itself. It, it, it was so critical. Thanks for the question. It was so critically important. I mean, we have really, um, we have really had our challenges. I think we've gotten, for, I'll leave Renee aside for a second. I've learned enough now. I, now I know almost, almost beginning to know how much I don't know. So I'm just beginning that process. Um, but, but one thing I do know is, it all starts with quality people. And it, it all starts with the values that Morgan's laying out. I, Morgan and I had, and Suzanne and Renee had some conversations early and it was as if she'd been, as if she'd been our partner for years. We were literally speaking the same language and it went from the business of sports, the actual sport themselves to winning, winning with soul hopefully. Uh, because as Renee pointed out, it, it, you'd like to always do the right thing. You'd like to be transparent. It is, but it is a competitive industry. Uh, so we needed, to, we needed to identify a series of critical people to join our organization and to start out with enough, to add another strong woman to the team is just, it's just a great day to add to my, another partner, to Renee and Suzanne for myself. Um, I, I couldn't be more pleased. It just, it was, it was instantaneous. And then when you add that kind of cultural fit that we had with Morgan on top of the depth of her experience and also just let's not ignore that she's coming from the most powerful sports league in the world to the WNBA. These are all small things that, you know, I, I, I always go back to where the NBA, it, it, Morgan's right. We're not trying to build, we're not trying to model after a men's league, but the men's league ended, entered their 25th season with 14 teams. And um, now they have 30, I believe. And they're proposing, fran you know, expansion at two and a half billion dollars of franchise. There's a gap there that we can narrow. And to, 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 to tell these stories and to truly empower this 
incredibly <laughs> elegant, gritty game. We we need to we need to tap into some of those resources, and we need a professional to do it, and particularly a professional who's so deeply embedded in sports and in sports in Atlanta. So, you know, uh, I'll take out a page out of Renee's book. Like I'm I'm all in. I'm hyped. I, I couldn't be more excited. This was a very, very important hire. Clearly, we have a couple other uh, things, uh, uh, important hires, and we'll address those as we go forward. But we'll take the time, and we have taken the time. And then, and thanks, and thanks, Renee, for the shout out to Suzanne, because Suzanne took the time, sourced Morgan, met Morgan, um, essentially attracted her into our league. Um, laid out our values, and and uh, it, today's a very, very important day for, for us, I think for the NBA, the WNBA, and I think for women's sports generally. All right, thank you. We're done our last few questions here. Um, first, we'll go to B. Terrell from W. Go ahead, B. What up, B? Hey. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you. Uh-oh. Sorry. Hey, Renee, how are you? How's everyone today? Good afternoon. Uh, my question is for Morgan. Um, first, I guess I have two questions. After the ink dried and everything was official, walk me through some of your initial thoughts and reactions. After the ink dried and it was official. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, it's, I've woken up every single day and said, oh my gosh, I get to go do this. It's a pinch me moment. It literally, I've done some really cool things in sports. I've worked with the best of the best of, you know, male athletes, female athletes, you know, you name it. But I get to go and, and be a steward of a brand that has so much upside in the city of Atlanta. And I, I've woken up every day since then just over the moon and no no looking back i am it's bittersweet because i absolutely love the team that i've been able to help build here at uh the arthur blank family of businesses um with the atlanta falcons and mercedes-benz stadium that's the hardest part is leaving an incredible franchise we've been um in the throes of organizational evolution i would say organizational change but really evolution um, within the Falcons and, and we've completely revamped communications, marketing, digital media, digital monetization, how we storytell. And, and we've been on that path for five years and, and some really significant hires been, have, that have been made over here that I've been a part of and, and I'm going to leave a, an amazing team, but all of them are coming over now to be Atlanta Dream fans and, and, and a part of all of this that we're building here. That's great to hear. And uh, my next question, um, this dream team and the organization has played a huge part, especially in recent years in social justice initiatives. And the players have been adamant at actively using their platforms. So how do you see yourself supporting them? And do you have any plans in place to continue um, in assisting them amplifying their voices? Well, that's first and foremost, one of the biggest things that I'll be working on. Obviously, working on solidifying the foundation of the business side, the organization, but really, really figuring out how do we authentically continue that connection with the Atlanta community. And like I said before, it starts with listening. It starts with listening to the players. It starts with listening to the community and really figuring out how do we make those connections in the most authentic way possible. And what that looks like, I don't know yet, but I know that these athletes want to be more visible. Um, as you know, you know, women's athletes are sometimes forced to go and play overseas. Some of them really want to go play overseas, but some of them have to, to make ends meet for their own careers and to make the kind of money that they need to sustain their families. And so what I'd like to be able to do, and this is you know something that Suzanne has talked about, Larry has talked about, Renee has talked about, is really figuring out how do we close that gap? It's gonna take some time. The social justice piece of it though, has been at the core of Northland's values and it's at the core of the dreams values. I mean, like I said before, the, the name itself 
the name Atlanta Dream comes from Martin Luther King's favorite, famous speech. And we need to be worthy of that. And what that looks like in, um, in years to come, in days to come, really depends on the athletes and the staff and the organization to be able to build that together with us. Thank you and do it for the dream. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for uh, plugging the hashtag there. Um, <laughs> all right, we've got our last two questions here. Uh, first, we'll go back to Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Uh, yeah, this question is for, I guess, anyone who wants it. Um, it. It seems like Morgan isn't necessarily gonna be super involved on like the player and personnel side of things, um, but there is obviously a, a hole in the, in the GM search. Um, can you just talk about what that timeline looks like and when we might be getting more updates on that end? Larry, you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that, Renee. I think, uh, the, I think first of all, we're all going to be partners. So we're all going to be communicating on the basketball side and the business side. It's one vision. But in the same way that we didn't rush this hire and we waited till we find the, found the right position, um, we will wait until we find the right hire for the GM search. We do believe in, in, in our model is a separate head of business operations and head of basketball operations, whatever you call it, let's call it for now GM. Uh, and um, we're gonna take our time and we're gonna try to find someone uh, of, of really, frankly, of this caliber to join the team. I'm, I'm sure we will actually. Um, we have a lot of decisions to make in the off season. We have a lot of unrestricted free agents. We have a lot of cap room. Uh, and um, so uh, it'd be great, sooner would be better. But we're not gonna, we're not, we're not rushing. And we've said that from day one. We're like, there was a lot of silence around the dream. They're like, what the heck are they, you know, what's going on? We've been working and working very collaboratively and very effectively. I I, I think the state of our partnership is very, very strong, if I can mark it for a second. <laughs> All right. And our last question you comes know, from I'm, Howard. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I just want to add one thing. I just want to shout out to our coaches, our staff, and our players who have withstood an enormous amount of change. You know, when the winds of change blow, build windmills. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think despite the recent one loss record, we have competed really, really hard. And I'm really really proud of our organization despite some a really challenging year thanks i just wanted to get that out there something to get out there thank you um our last question is going to come back from uh howard Magdell from the next go ahead howard appreciate it and again thank you all for your insights today uh but, but morgan if i could take you back even to what you discussed and there's obviously the inherent advantage of being able to build a model in its own right as something that's not in the shadow of what's previously been built. But that obviously means you have to create your own benchmarks. And so I'm wondering what you can take me through as far as how you do that, what success looks like. And if there's even like one thing you've already identified that you say, when this happens, that's when I'm gonna know we're on the right track. Howard, that's a great question. Um, the KPIs and the benchmarks are really important. and. Larry and Suzanne and I have talked a lot about that and Renee and I as well. Those benchmarks are really something that has to be built together. Um, I don't profess to come in and say the benchmark should be this. Um, I didn't do that with the Falcons. It was really a team built set of KPIs because we really, the Falcons, we were really at, in the bottom quartile of the, of the NFL when it came to engagement and when it came to some of the fan metrics and, and when it came to engagement on digital and content. We're now in the top quartile and, and that's taken a long time to really figure out what could be the benchmark, but, but building an organization to be able to meet those goals is, is you know, the first step. So I wish I could give you more specifics, but I'm actually really glad that I can't yet because I do think that it has to be built over time. We're gonna be looking uh, across all facets of the business and identifying efficiencies, understanding um, what the team on, on the inside is doing really well and where they need some extra help. Um, and, and that's what we look to bring 
to bring on board is, you know, build an organization that is people first, values first, and really build the KPIs and the metrics together in a way that reflects the way that women's sports should be built. So I really look forward to having this conversation six months from now, a year from now, and, and giving you some more insight into how that's transpired. Meet you, Morgan. Thank you. Circle back, Howard. Okay. <laughs> Great to see y'all. Thank you. All right. Well, that'll conclude today's press conference. Thank you all so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. Morgan, welcome to the dream. We're very Yay! happy to have you. Excited <laughs> <laughs> to be here. Thanks, you guys. Later, y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye.